Hey everybody, welcome back. This is a lesson on perspective. We'll be doing one point, two point, and three point perspective. I am Derek T. Stevens. I am the crow on 3dbuzz.com. The crow's nest is where you can find me at doing daily drops. I do comic books for a living. I do, uh, I guess you can say, conceptual art for video games and movies and all sorts of fun stuff. So this is actually a page I created for a manga script that I've been doing. It's nothing super cool and sexy, but we have perspective. This is an example of a two-point perspective that we'll be creating later on in this video. Uh, we're going to be ta talking about one-point perspective, again, another uh, different book called uh, The New. Uh, hopefully it'll be out next year. Uh, this, believe it or not, is done with one-point perspective. Uh, we'll be talking about the Vanishing Line, uh, and we'll be talking about uh, the Horizon Line, and all sorts of nice things. We're going to start out, however, on one-point perspective. It's the easiest. I got my little robot here. This is done for some Florida gig. Um, real quick lesson on this or uh, feedback. Uh, it's just all done in spot blacks. I literally get a black brush like this. And the reason I do this in production is it is a great way to get a good read for uh, your renderings really quick. So he's nothing more than big shoulder pads, some gears, we'll have some sort of big elbow pad, and gun, and you can literally just start doing some really cool stuff like this. It's great for, uh, again, really quick reads, so you can give to your producers. I give them no more than four, because I don't want to make them, I guess, choose too many things. It makes life harder on me. Let me cut this out of here. So, anyway, we're going to use this little robot to represent, not the lollipop guild, but uh, one point perspective. First thing in one point perspective, I got my robot layer. Let's go ahead and check our settings. I'm always about that. Go into my background layer. I go to image, image size. I have 20 by 20 at 300 dpi, dots per inch. That's again because I want to uh, grab a lot of detail. So, my robot layer selected, I'm going to grab yet another layer. I am going to call it one point. I know, not, not a gold star for originality by any means. All right, so I'm going to hide my little robot layer right here. That's fine. So I'm on my one point perspective layer. The first thing we're going to do, we're going to talk about the horizon line. And whenever I start my, my picture out, uh, I draw a level line across where the horizon line is at. And the horizon line is easy to see, unless you live in the mountains like me, then there's mountains in the way and you, you can't really see it. But imagine yourself in a, uh, in a boat, and there's nothing but water, and you look straight out there, and it looks like the world, because it is curved, it's not flat, flat like some people think, um, it's the horizon line. Uh, that's basically your eye level. So I, again, I push my B button for my brush. I'm going to put my horizon line here, and my brush is way too big. Let's get it down to a 60. I put my horizon line three quarters of the way up. I'm touching my canvas, 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 and hitting shift and drawing it across like this. This is my horizon line. I'll bring my brush size down quite a bit. And right now we're going to do our vanishing point. This is the focal of our, what we're looking at. And I'll put my vanishing point someplace right here. Now again, you want to save this on separate layers, you can erase them later. But uh, for aesthetics and, and moving on for time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit my shift button. Actually, I'm going to touch my canvas, my shift button. Bring it all the way down this corner here like this. Shift button, or holding my canvas, shift, and bring it down like this. Now why did I do this? There's no really right, wrong, or reason. I just That's the area that I picked. Because we're going to start out like a road, or even train tracks. If you stand on train tracks, these lines go straight. They don't really vanish. It's just an illusion. Again, it's the way the world is round, and it's their point of view. So right now what I'm doing with perspective one point is I am taking this vanishing point, and my roads are right here. So what I'm going to do next is I'll zoom in here just a little bit, bring my brush size down a little bit down to a 20. I'm taking from my, or my vanishing point here, hitting shift again, and it's giving it a little bit more texture, doing the same thing over here. And what you're going to do is, everything is going to be straight across. It, 
like your horizon line whenever you're doing perspective. Um, so if I wanted train tracks, I would literally come here and make a straight line like this. I hit my canvas, hit shift, and just bring my line straight over like that. We can do it like that, that's not bad. Just wouldn't see out of this, but we're going to make it like a road. So I'm going to come down here, hit shift, and I'm going to bring a straight line like this. So not split the, diff uh, split the difference in the middle. I'm going to get my eraser tool. Let's do a test. And obviously I need a hard edge eraser. And the closer these things are to you, the thicker or uh, the bigger they're going to be. So I'm going to hit 1. And all I'm doing is my, my eraser set at 400. Let me show you again. All I'm doing is laying my eraser down on this line right here. Boom. I have a break. I'm going to bring my eraser down, watch right up here, to 250. Measure it up a little bit on the line. Boom. 2. 3. Bring my er eraser down to a 175. Come up here. And it's a nice little break in the line. Bring my eraser down to a 125. Boom. And there we go, another little break. I'm really going to bring my eraser down to a 70. Come up through here like this. Bring it down to a 60. Bring it down to a 40. Bring it down to a 30. Now it's the illusion of we have the same size line. The illusion, okay? And it's in the middle of the road that's being split. Now the closer the, uh, the image is to your canvas, the bigger the lines are going to be. I'm going to prove this to you with my little robot. I'm going to put my little robot right here. Oops, bullocks. I'm not selecting the right one. So I have my little robot right here. Uh, I'm a big robot and I'm a hitchhiker. My, my gears are broke down. So here's what I'm going to do to prove to you uh, what illusion is all about. I'm going to take this layer here. I'm going to select my robot right like this. Hit Control C, Control V, and I'll move this robot right here. They are the same size. I'm not adjusting any size at all. But now I'm bringing them up here like this, closer to the horizon line and vanishing point, and he looks bigger. Look at that illusion. It's the same size. Bring him back down here. He gets smaller. He gets bigger. He gets smaller. He gets bigger. And the reason why this is important, say you're drawing trees. I'm going to flip them over this way. Hit Control T. Come over like this. And bring him up here like so. See, so it looks bigger. And suppose, let's go ahead and do some more work here. I'm going to hit my B, my brush button. I'm going to create yet another layer here. And I'm going to get a blue pen, like this. And I'm touching my canvas here, bringing a straight line like this. I'm going to do this again. I'm making a little thin line through here. And again, whenever you're drawing in perspective, your horizon line is always going to be straight. Horizon, uh, and this one's going to be perpendicular. So Bring it straight down here like this. Now from this corner here, straight across like this. Hit my eraser tool. We have the start of a building. So I'll go back to my brush here, from this area here. Straight across. Make some windows straight across like that. Let's put a little more detail into it. My brush size is a 20. I'll knock it down to a 15. I'm touching my canvas, bringing it across like this. Touching my canvas, bringing it across like this. Now I'm going to pump up my uh, brush size a little bit, because remember with the lesson down here, the closer they are to the camera, the bigger they're going to be. So I'm going to touch here, straight down, straight down, move over a little bit, straight down, straight down, bring my brush size down to a 15, come over here, I'm just eyeballing the measurements here, but you can tell the, the line weight's getting thinner, straight down, 
straight down, straight down, and bring my brush size down even more to a 9. Coming over here like this, straight down, straight down. And this is my horizon line. I don't want to actually, oops, start building up through here. And from this corner here to here. Because if you keep going too far and the horizon line or horizon lines way down here, it's going to start to look, I guess, skewed. So we really got to be careful where we place the horizon line and our vanishing points. All right, so let me clean this area up right through here. Have the makings of a little building through here. Erase that. This wouldn't make a door. My brush size again is a nine. I'll pump it up to a 15. Heading here. And all I'm doing is touching my canvas and coming straight down. Touching my canvas, coming straight down. I'm going to build my brush size up quite a bit here. I'm going to come from here. Come from here. Almost like a dock area, like a loading bay. Here. And use my eraser tool again. sloppy my clean up through here. Let you guys get the points. We now have a docking bay door area. Now if we want we can put some decorations up through here. What I would actually do is I come through here once I select my brush make a straight line like this to this corner here. Touching my canvas coming through here like this. Hit E again for my eraser tool. I'll bring it down here so I have a little bit better cleanup and control. And what I'll do with my brush button right here, make it look like this has a lip. I need to hit shift. Silly Derek, tricks are for kids. Then you can throw some shadows and stuff in through here. One more thing we're going to do before we wrap up One Point Perspective, because these do look really flat. What I'm going to do here is, my brush size is a 15. I'm actually going to make it a 10. And come up through here, go straight down like this. Straight down here like so. Kind of giving the illusion that they are beveled. They are coming out of the building just a little bit. You need to make this a little bit closer. Remember, the farther the way they are, the smaller they get. So now with those little bitty lines right there, we're starting to get the shape of a building. Go ahead and clean this up for us. And what the heck, let's do one more here. Touching my canvas. Coming through here. Straight line down here like this. Straight up here like so. And what is that? I'm not for sure. It's just a decorative part of the building. We're racing past my little robot guy. I'll just select this with my wand. I hit backspace and control D. And that's the intro to perspective, point one, one point perspective. So again, uh, to go over everything, what we're going to do is, you know, you have your canvas 300 by 300. You draw your horizon line first. That's where your eye level's at. You draw your vanishing point, and then everything comes back to the vanishing point. We also learned a little bit about uh, the illusion of space and size. I cut uh, my uh, robot duplicated him. It looks. Here we go here. This is the robot I want. Again, same size, close to the, the vanishing point. He looks bigger. So there you have it. There you are. That's one point perspective. <coughs> hey, welcome back everybody. It was like a short pause. I, I did the 1,000 fingertip push-ups uh, while I did the pause and set up this new canvas for us. We're going to go jump right into two-point perspective. 
Now I, I threw you guys a curveball. I told you it's very important to check your, your, your size of your canvas and make sure all your settings are set proper. So I'm going to go to image, image size. I have 300 dpi. That's a standard. My height is 20 and my width is 30. So now we're going to do a two-point perspective. And this is what you can look like when you do a two-point perspective. Now we're not going to go into that, that level of detail, but we are going to build uh, two to three buildings, okay? Sounds like a plan! Okay, here's what we're going to do. We learned last time, uh, I'm going to do a level or a layer here. And we'll say base 1, B, A, S, C, 0, 1. So this is where I'm going to build all my, my wireframes, so to speak, to speak, if you guys are like familiar with 3D. I'm going to touch my canvas here, shift button all the way across for my horizon line. I'm going to put my points way, way out here. These are my vanishing points. This is two point perspective. So we have two points. I'm going to come right here and just above the horizon line a little bit, hit shift. This will be my first building. I'll make it quite big. And I'm going to take this corner here, and this goes to this corner like this. One. Two. From this corner to this corner. One. Two. So now we have this huge wedge-looking building. It's going to be up to you to decide how far your building is going to be. Now, just like last time, one-point perspective, when you're cutting straight down, I'll make my building about right here straight down just like this straight down like a so so now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to clean up some of these lines right here I'm going to show you guys another trick, I'm going to hit my eraser tool bring my eraser, eraser size up to a 50 I'm going to touch right here hit my shift button and it's gone shift gone Holding on, putting on the canvas, hitting shift. Oops. Same thing for here, hitting shift. Once I touch canvas, let's bring this over here. We don't want that. And we have a two point perspective cube. So that's pretty cool. I mean, we can really work with that, but let's throw a couple more cubes on the Barbie, eh? Oi. Seems like a plan, eh, mate? So here's what we're going to do. I'll get me brush back again by hitting B. And then what I'm going to do here is, from these lines, like right here and here, I'll just decide how, how tall I want my building. I want these other buildings a little bit smaller. So just like this, I'm going to do a perpendicular line, touch my canvas, hit Shift. From this corner here, go to my vanishing points. From this corner here to my vanishing points perpendicular line here, I'll make this a bit longer. Now this corner here goes to the second point, the vanishing point. Like a so. Like a so. Now we have this point up here we have to worry about, okay? So I'm going to bring this point all the way up here to this vanishing point like this. And now I'm going to my eraser tool back up. Hit E for eraser. Hit shift to here, so I can leave that area, touching my canvas, shift, canvas, shift, canvas, shift with my eraser tool, shift, now I want that part of the building up through here. So now we have two buildings. Let's go and do our third building. I'll hit my B button for my brush. I'm going to come over here and I'll make it right here, about this tall. From this corner I go to my vanishing point here. Vanishing point here. To my vanishing points. To my vanishing point. Perpendicular line right here like so. And this vanishing point all the way down to this mamma jamma here. And let's do something we've not done yet. Let's make a break in this building. Let's make a vanish or a perpendicular line here. 
from here to this vanishing point like that. And I'm going to make a vanish or my perpendicular line right here. And this to my vanishing point here. Vanishing point here. So now I'm going to do some cleanup in my eraser tool. my horizon line so much right now. Actually I will in a minute. My bad. I'll keep my vanishing points but my horizon line. You can do this several different ways, different layers. This is how I, I, I really work. I'll do something like this and then hold on, let's do a B button. Let's take this over to here like that. There we go. So it's a little bit shorter. All I'm doing is clean up now. More clean up. What we'll do is we'll make another layer, sort all this out. Almost done with a bad cleanup job. And voila! Dun, dun, dun. We have some buildings, kind of like a warehouse looking thing. Nothing really big, nothing really clean or sexy cool. But again, this is just a very basic introduction to perspective. So I'm going to create another layer here. I'm going to call it base02. I'll come back in here with a black line. And this wouldn't put some win windows in through here. So I'm touching this area right here. Help if I have my brush. In this area right here. Straight line down, straight line down, straight line down. Follow this area right here because I don't want to make this window larger or smaller. Will that be aesthetically pleasing? I'm eyeballing it right here. Let's do some more windows. Straight down, straight down like so. So what you're going to do for this point over here, the second vanishing point, you're going to come over here and eyeball it. Straight down to this point here. Loosen the side open up here like that. Come over here. This is roughly the same size. Detail is in the devil's doings. Is that the word I'm looking for? straight down and eyeballing from here to here here to here straight down let's make a little door here just straight up come to my vanishing point like this I got a little door here and let's throw some brakes in here like this for a building make it super simple and easy All I'm doing is hitting shift and bringing my line straight down. And voila, you have a building with other buildings. And this all you have to do is repeat. You do your cleanup, you take your uh, vanishing points to or your lines to your vanishing point, you built the horizon. And that's a very quick down and dirty introduction to two-point perspective. And it's really cool when you throw superheroes up there and they're fighting. There's literally even put somebody up here like this. Here, let's do this. Let's make another layer. My brush button. Remember my spot black I was talking about? Let's 
do this. Bring my eraser tool down a little bit. That's really rough. And from here, I'm not hitting my perspective, so I'm going to hit Control. Lean this down more like that. Hit Enter. Control D to deselect. Use my eraser tool. So part of that is on top of the building like that. And, oh, looky there, there's a, some sort of spaceship on top of a building. So there you have it, there you are. We've done, gone over one point, two point. When we come back, we will do three point perspective. Hey, bam, we're back. Just like that. And I know it's uh, instantaneous for you that I did some setups. And not like uh, the crunch kind for working out. Hey, uh, again, just to drill it in your head, we're going to go to image, image size, 20 by 20 this time, 300 dpi, and I make sure my brush is picked, and this is three point perspective. I'll tell you what I'm going to do, we're not even going to make a layer, because I'm not going to go crazy on this one, okay? We're going to make a horizon line, just like we've done before. And uh, I'll tell you what, we'll make our vanishing point here. Here, I'll get a blue this time, and just like everything else, <clears throat> we'll do two. I'm gonna do one that is up above the horizon line, and one that's down below the horizon line. We'll start out with this one real quick, the one below the horizon line, and we need a three-point perspective down here. Let me. Bring this right like this, and then bring my three point, my third point right here. So I have one, two, and three. Just like before, I'm going to take this all the way to vanishing point line two. Take this to vanishing point one. And I'll bring this all the way down here to where this vanishing point three is going to be at. And my third point. I'll bring all the way back down to here like this. All the way over here like this. Cut this in half here. Cut this in half here. And from this vanishing point here, I'm going to bring all the way to, or this line here, all the way to vanishing point two. And from this point all the way to vanishing point number one. So now we have a really cool looking box. Get my eraser tool. I said eraser tool. Thank you very much, eraser tool. Hitting my canvas, hitting shift, doing a little bit of cleanup so things are a little bit easier to read. Just doing some cleanup. Come on, work with me, eraser. We have a nice looking box here. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and build uh, some windows and stuff on here. And we'll draw a street. And remember in, in, in lesson number one how we built a street? Let's go ahead and do that here. Go back to my brush. And I can bring this down here to make it kind of wide. And again, I know it looks like it's at an angle. It's the illusion. I'm still going to come straight across here like this. In the same way we built windows before. From here, straight down to here, straight down. Throw some different shapes on it this time. Spanishing point here.
straight down, straight down, straight down. It's the same thing on this side here. I'm touching my canvas here. I'm just bringing these straight down. There's a lot more subtle nuances that you guys can explore, and I encourage you to explore. <clears throat> but this again is just an introductory sort of three point perspective. Let's go ahead and get rid of this canvas here. All this, all this perspective here. Go back to my horizon line, not horizon line, I've been saying that a lot. We have a three point perspective again. This time it's going to go under the horizon line. All the way down to here. And you'll see a subtle change. This looks very elongated. Let's do it over here. Very skinny and elongated. This corner here, all the way up to here, like that. This corner here, there we go. Hit my eraser tool. Oops, I forgot one, didn't I? I need to bring this back to vanishing point here. And then we have another little building here. Yay, buildings! So let's do this. <clears throat> Last one for three point. I mean, this is really kind of advanced, and I don't want to go over super advanced detail just yet. Let's do one that is below the horizon line. Bullets. Let's do one above the horizon line. Derek is going crazy right now. Throw that perspective here. Throw that perspective here. What I'm really trying to illustrate is it really depends where your, your, your three point vanishing point is going to be down here. To your horizon lines up here. Let's see out here. Let's do one below the horizon line. So now we'll see more of the top of the building. And I can I can slice this anywhere, but it's going to be going to this horizon line or vanishing point right here. And there you have it. There you are. This is way way short, but I really don't want to go into a lot of detail on three point. It's great for a, a bird's eye view when you have superheroes flying and jumping and all that sort of stuff. Uh, I've done that in the past, and it's really nice to know. And some really great programs I use, Manga Studio that sets up everything for you. But to understand that, to be able to do that, you need to understand vanishing points. So to recap, we've done over one point uh, perspective where you have your horizon line and you have one vanishing point. Great for train tracks, railways, roads. We went over a two point perspective where you have two vanishing points and your horizon line. And then we went over three point, where you have obviously three vanishing points and your horizon line. It's down, it's dirty, it's simple, a very quick introductory lesson to perspective. I hope you guys learned a lot. Again, this is Derek Stevens. I am the crow on the forums. I do the crow's nest daily drops. This is for 3dbuzz.com. Come visit, be a member sponsor, help support us so we can support you. You guys have a great day. Thank you very much.